Have you ever wondered what happens to cruise ships after they retire? What fate awaits these retired ships? Do they simply fade away into obscurity? Or is there more to their story? Well, today we're going to find out. Welcome back to Ship Insights, fellow explorers. Today, we set sail on an extraordinary journey into the unknown, exploring the secret fate of ships as they retire from their majestic voyages. Shipbreaking is one of the fates chosen for these majestic vessels, and it is a highly profitable business. However, shipbreaking is an extremely polluting industry in addition to having a significant negative impact on the health and life of workers. Before we proceed with this video, take a moment and like and subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. Factors that lead to a cruise ship's retirement. Our expedition begins by unraveling the factors that lead to a cruise ship's retirement. But fear not, the journey doesn't end there. We'll set course for the enchanting world of ship repurposing, yet not all retired cruise ships find themselves in glamorous new roles. This is a crucial process for the circular economy, providing multiple advantages. The construction of a new fleet of zero carbon ships can be optimized with the help of the circular economy concept to reduce waste and ensure a continuous flow of valuable materials. This may result in reduced environmental impact, financial savings, improved working conditions for society, and resource efficiency. As newer, larger ships enter the market and demand evolves, older ships become obsolete for cruise companies. These retired ships may no longer meet the demands of the evolving market or offer the latest technologies and amenities that passengers seek. Building larger ships has become a trend for cruise companies as they can accommodate three to four times as many passengers compared to previous decades. This trend puts pressure on companies to continually invest in new ships to stay competitive. As a result, Older ships become surplus to the company's needs. Norwegian Cruise Lines plans to invest $2.4 billion in ship construction-related capital expenditures for 2023, with projections of $500 million in 2024 and $1.8 billion in 2025. Royal Caribbean Group expects ship construction costs of around $4.1 billion in 2023, with a total of $9.8 billion for all existing ship orders. Carnival Corporation anticipates contracted new builds of $1.8 billion in 2023 and is adjusting its investment spending outlook to reduce capital expenditures. Moreover, maintaining older ships can become increasingly expensive. These ships may require more frequent repairs, and the costs of maintaining outdated technology and infrastructure can outweigh the benefits. Newer ships often incorporate more efficient systems, reducing operating costs and improving overall performance. During a cruise ship's active years, it typically operates under one company for a span of 10 to 20 years. Throughout this period, the ship undergoes regular maintenance and refurbishments to keep up with industry standards and passenger expectations. Refurbishments often take place in dry docks, where the ship receives technological upgrades, improved amenities, and cosmetic enhancements, such as painting and general improvements. However, after approximately 30 to 40 years of sailing the seas, most cruise ships reach the end of their service life and are retired. The combination of increasing maintenance costs, lack of efficiency compared to newer vessels, and changing market demands ultimately leads to their retirement. At this point, the ship's value may lie in other purposes such as being sold, repurposed, or scrapped for materials. In conclusion, the pressure to build larger, more technologically advanced ships, combined with the increasing costs of maintaining older vessels, leads to the retirement of cruise ships after several decades of service. While these retired ships may no longer meet the needs of cruise companies, they can still find value in other roles. Usage of retired ships As the sun sets on their active sailing days, Retired cruise ships continue to hold value even after they can no longer navigate the open waters. The labor-intensive process of building these massive vessels ensures that they remain valuable assets as long as they retain their seaworthiness. Consequently, most retired ships find new purposes and are given a second lease of life in various capacities. Whether they were once luxurious cruise liners, powerful warships, or sturdy freight ships, there is usually a buyer ready to take them on. When a cruise ship reaches the end of its service life, there are various possibilities for its retirement. Rather than heading straight to the scrapyard, ships are often resold or repurposed, finding new roles in different capacities. Some companies purchase older cruise ships and rebrand them to fit their cruise lines, refurbishing them to offer new experiences to passengers. Others transition into different ocean roles, such as being used as island ferries. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated the retirement and selling of ships, 
as the cruise industry faced significant financial burdens and the halting of cruises for an extended period. Cruise companies looked to sell their older ships to generate profits and adapt to the changing cruising landscape. For example, Royal Caribbean and Carnival announced the retirement and sale of several older ships in 2020, making room for newer additions to their fleets. However, when cruise ships finally retire and are no longer viable for resale or repurposing, they typically end up in shipbreaking yards. These yards, located in countries like Turkey, India, and Pakistan, dismantle the ships for scrap. Before the ships are demolished, the company can salvage and sell anything of value from the ship. Anything remaining is removed and sold locally, including items like toilets, chandeliers, and chairs. The annual production of steel from shipbreaking is in the millions of tons. Recycled steel meets 7% of the country's steel needs in India. According to the Times, the average scrap value of a ship, which is 25,000 metric tons without fittings, is roughly $4 million. In some rare cases, retired cruise ships can be repurposed as tourist attractions. While the Titanic had a tragic fate, other ships from the same era now serve as tourist attractions, like the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. These ships may have restaurants and museums, and offer visitors a chance to explore their history. During the pandemic, when cruising was suspended, the sight of massive ghost ships floating offshore became a fascination for many. Tour companies even offered tours to bring tourists up close to the anchored ships, creating a unique attraction, captivating the imagination of onlookers, and offering a glimpse into a world on hold. The worst case scenario for a cruise ship's retirement is its sinking, as seen in the infamous story of the Titanic. However, in some cases, ships are purposely sunk to create artificial reefs for recreational diving. Naval ships are strategically placed on the ocean floor to provide a habitat for marine life and diving opportunities. And here you have an amazing opportunity to get some amazing content ahead. So like and subscribe to our channel now. While retirement marks the end of a cruise ship's active service life, there are still various possibilities for their future. From resale and repurposing to scrapping, becoming tourist attractions, or even serving as artificial reefs. The fate of each retired ship depends on market demand, conditions, and the decisions made by cruise companies and stakeholders. Freelance cruise journalist Peter Nigo is a man fascinated by ocean liners and cruising since his childhood. He has explored shipbreaking yards like Alang in India and Aliaga in Turkey, witnessing the remarkable transformation of retired cruise ships. Imagine standing on the vast beaches of Alang, where Nigo spotted historic liners and first-generation cruise ships as far as the eye could see. Up to 200 ships can be demolished simultaneously in this shipbreaking hub, creating a scene straight out of a science fiction movie or a post-apocalyptic landscape. As the ships reach their final destination, everything inside must be removed. It's a meticulous process that involves stripping away not just the grand chandeliers, but even the toilets themselves. The ship's interior is laid bare, ready for its next phase. But it's not just about dismantling. Nigo has a different motive for his visits. He is a collector, and he times his trips to coincide with the arrival of significant ships. His goal? To claim interior assets for his collection. With the help of a local agent, Nigo gains access to the vessels. Picture him climbing up a ladder, exploring the ship's nooks and crannies, scouting for hidden treasures. Once he spots the items he desires, negotiations begin, and deals are struck. These precious artifacts are then carefully packed into containers and shipped back to his home in the United States, where he proudly displays them in what he calls his Ocean Liner Museum. Step inside Nago's house, and you'll find yourself surrounded by the remnants of a bygone era. Every door, light fixture, railing, and nearly every piece of furniture and artwork comes from classic mid-20th century ships. It's like stepping back in time, with elements from Carnival's first ship, the Mardi Gras, and other iconic vessels like the MV Augustus and Stella Solaris. If there's anything that doesn't find a place in his house, fear not. Nigo offers them for sale on his website, where fellow ocean liner enthusiasts and collectors of mid-century furniture eagerly snatch them up. While Nigo hasn't made any purchases at the Turkish breaking yard in Aliaga, he has witnessed ships like the original Pacific Princess, made famous in the 1980s TV series The Love Boat, arriving for their final reckoning. Visiting maritime breaking yards is no easy task, and Nigo keeps his methods under wraps. It's an experience fraught with challenges and risks, but one that allows him to capture unique photographs that highlight the contrast between the beach, the industrial shipbreaking activities, and the natural beauty surrounding them. Conclusion And there you have it. 
When cruise ships retire, they embark on their final journey to shipbreaking yards, where their stories are dismantled piece by piece. It's a bittersweet process, but it allows for salvaging valuable assets and recycling materials. As we bid farewell to these retiring ships, we must acknowledge the significant contributions they have made to the cruise industry and the countless memories they have created for passengers over the years. Each ship tells a story, from its maiden voyages to its final destinations. While their retirement may be bittersweet, it opens up possibilities for the next generation of cruise ships to take center stage, equipped with advanced technology, luxurious amenities, and enhanced sustainability practices. So, as we navigate the ever-evolving world of cruising, let us remember the legacy of these retired ships and celebrate the ongoing innovation and excitement that awaits us on the seas. May these retired vessels forever hold a place in our hearts and memories. That's it, guys. What do you think is the best way for a cruise ship to retire? Comment down your thoughts on this matter. And if you like our video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more exciting and informative videos. Until then, happy cruising and don't miss the boat.